Hi YouTube, what's up? Welcome to the part 2 of Extreme Water Cool PC Build. If you have not already seen the first part, please check it out over here. In the last part, we showed you how to install the various components of this computer. And in this part, we are going to take it a notch higher by going ahead and installing all the various water cooling kit from Corsair. I'm going to be using hardline acrylic tubes to transfer the water from the pump to the CPU block. And this involves cutting and bending of the tubes, which I'll show you in detail. This installation requires a lot of patience and skill because we are dealing with liquid cooling to cool the various components of a computer. And as you know, computers are not waterproof and a small mistake can end up damaging the computer. But don't worry, if you follow the instructions correctly, the end result is immensely satisfying and it's worth all the effort involved. So what are you waiting for? Let's begin. Continuing from where we left last week, we are now going to install the water pump reservoir combo. This is the component that stores the coolant which is usually distilled water and pumps it to the CPU block which eventually pumps it out to the radiator. The radiator is then cooled using fans. The principle is very similar to that found in a car. Here we are using the Corsair XT5 RGB reservoir pump combo which has addressable RGB lighting and has a well reputed motor to pump the coolant to various parts of the PC. Now let's install the GPU. The reason I am installing this so late is purely because of the size of the GPU and I find it more convenient to install the card after installing the pump. The GPU I am using here is the Sapphire Radon RX 5600 XT with 6 GB of memory. I so wanted to water cool this as well but could not find a water block for this. I may do it later once I find the appropriate water block. We now have all the components installed. Let's take the measurements to cut and bend our acrylic tubes. It's very important to plan out how you want to set up your tubes as this will let you decide how long or short you want to cut your tubes and at what angle you want to bend them. Once you have calculated the measurements, take the acrylic pipe and mark where you want to perform the bend. For instance, here we want to perform the bend at 20 inch. So I take measurement of 20 inch and mark it with a permanent marker over here. So this helps me understand where I want to perform the bend. To cut the acrylic pipe, you will need a hacksaw. Place the pipe at the edge of a surface and cut it firmly using the hacksaw. Do not exert too much pressure as you may shatter the pipe. Once you have cut the pipe, it is very important to sand the edges of the pipe and smoothen it. This is done so that the o-ring washer in the water cooling fittings are not damaged. Now the crucial part of this project, bending of the tube. Once you have cut the pipes and have marked where you need to perform the bend, insert a silicon insert which matches the inner diameter of the acrylic tube. Acrylic tube comes in many diameters so ensure your silicon insert matches that of the tube. This is done to prevent the kinking of the tube as the tube is hollow and needs something inside to retain its shape. Here we are dipping the silicon insert inside a soap solution to make it easier to slip it inside the acrylic tube. You can also use mineral oil for this. To bend the tube, we need to use a heat gun. Use the heat gun at its low setting and hold the tube about 3 to 4 inches away from the heat gun. It depends upon the power of the heat gun and the thickness of the tubing. Things can get a bit hot, so wearing a pair of gloves is recommended. Point the heat gun at the location where you want to bend the pipe. Keep rotating the tube to evenly spread the heat across the tube. You also need to spread the heat from the left and right of the tube to evenly spread the heat. If you don't do this, the heat will be concentrated on one part and the tube will start bubbling or melting. You will notice that the tube will start wobbling after about 40 to 50 seconds and slowly start deforming. This is the right time to bend the tube. You can bend it by placing it on the table edge and get a 90 degree angle. You can also use tube bending kit to get the angle of your choice. Once all the pipes have been cut and bent, connect them to the various parts of the water and cooling components and seal them by screwing the hardline fittings. Ensure that the o-ring washer is properly inserted and the tube is firmly locked into place. After all the tubes have been connected, it's time to fill the coolant into the pump. You can use a funnel to pour the coolant inside. Use the provided jumper cable and connect it to the motherboard cable of your power supply unit. 
This ensures that only the pump is turned on and no other components of the PC is turned on and helps prevent any damage by the water leak. Once the coolant is poured, perform a leak test for at least 24 hours by running the pump. Check if there are any leaks and fix them before powering on the computer. Now that the setup is complete, let's attach the glass panels back onto the computer case. After installing all the components, it's time for the all important boot test. Keeping my fingers and toes crossed for this one. Awesome! It worked on its first boot. Isn't that great? Taking off plastic from a brand new product is a personal favorite task of mine. There is something relaxing about it. Now, time to reveal the beast. Are you ready? So guys, that's it. Hope you like the final look of this computer. We now have built a fully functioning liquid cooling computer over here. I thoroughly enjoyed the project and I'm very happy with the end result. I like the angles and the bends of the pipes that I managed to achieve and I really enjoy the flow of liquid in and around the computer which is so soothing to my eyes. With the liquid cooling installed, the computer never runs beyond 50 degrees for my task which is insane. As you know, this is my first water cooling experiment and I wanted to say that if I can do this, so can you. All you need is a good plan on how you want to connect the pipes and at what angles to bend them. I would also recommend to buy an additional pair of pipes and experiment on them before doing the actual project. You can also notice the computer is well lit by a host of RGB LEDs. The RGB colors of the computer are controlled by Corsair's IQ software and these can be customized to any patterns to match your preference. Let me know what you think of this build in the comment section below. Also, if you need any help or assistance in building a liquid cooled computer, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be more than happy to help. If you like the video, hit the like button and please do subscribe to the channel and support us to come out with great new content. Till then, this is AIT, take care, goodbye, namaste.